In this video, we're going to take a look at question number six from the 2007 AP Chemistry test. And in part A, it says, in the box provided, draw a complete Lewis electron di diagram for the IF3 molecule. Now, normally on the AP Chemistry test, you need to be writing your answers on the lines that they give you. But if they say, in this box, do something, then that gives you permission to make sure you can write in the box. So iodine has seven valence electrons. Three fluorines, each of them have seven, so we'll get 28 valence electrons. Iodine will be our central element. We'll bond our fluorines around, and we're going to give every element eight valence electrons. And when we do, we're going to count them up and see if we match 28. So when I count, I get 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, oops, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, so I'm short by two. So what I'll do is when you're short, just add another pair to your central element, and now we have 28, and that looks good. In part, uh, so in A, I'm just gonna say above. In part B, they ask on the basis of the Lewis electron dot diagram that you drew in A, predict the molecular ge geometry of the IF3 molecule. So you need to know your Vesper chart, Three things bonded with two lone pairs, that is definitely going to be T-shaped planar. Okay, in C it says, on the SO2 molecule, both of the bonds between sulfur and oxygen have the same length. Explain this observation, supporting your explanation by drawing in the box below a Lewis electron dot diagram for the SO2 molecule. So sulfur has six valence electrons. So does oxygen, but we have two of them, so we'll get 18. Sulfur will be my central atom. I'll give everything eight valence electrons. And then I'm gonna count. When I count two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, I've got too many. So when we have too many valence electrons, we're going to erase a pair from our central element and then erase a pair from one of the terminal elements and add a double bond. Now we're at 18, but sulfur is a, L, a row three element, so what we need to do is consider formal charge, so we'll slice our bonds in half and say oxygen should have six valence electrons, but when we count here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, it's got seven, so that would be a minus one formal charge. Sulfur should have six valence electrons, but when I count, I get one, two, three, four, five, so that'll be a plus one formal charge. And then oxygen should have six, and when I count this right oxygen, I get six, so that'll be a zero formal charge. We have a positive next to a negative, so what will happen is electrons from the negative are going to move and create a double bond with the positive, having those formal charges be minimized and going to zero. So you might wanna clean this up, but the overall Lewis structure here is going to look something like this. So we need to answer the question. And the question was, um, why does the sulfur oxygen bond have the same length? And so I think the structure does a good job of explaining why. I would just say the SO bonds um, are both double bonds here, so it would be expected that the bond length would be the same. Okay, now in part D it says, based on your Lewis dot diagram in part C, identify the hybridization of the sulfur atom in the SO2 molecule, so its steric number is one, two, and then a lone pair, so the number of atoms bonded to the central element, plus the number of lone pairs, so we'll get S1, P2, which would probably be represented SP2 on the AP test. Notice that double bonds versus single bonds do not change your hybridization.